Good morning and namaskar everyone and welcome to our uh, virtual lecture series uh, on Ayurveda pharmacological and therapeutic effects of top 75 traditional Ayurvedic medicine. And uh, today is our session 17 and the topic is uh, pharmacological and the therapeutic effects of Brahat Manjishtadi Kwat. Our expert uh, speakers today are Dr. Nishchita uh, and Dr. Vinay Chaudhary. Very warm welcome. And uh, our special guest today, Dr. Venkatesh Shivane and uh, Dr. Sanjay Motilal and as well as Dr. P. Sudhakar Reddy. Uh, thank you so very much, sir, for joining and very, very warm welcome. I see uh, Dr. Madan Thangavaluji and uh, Bhaswati joining from India. Welcome. And uh, we see a lot of enthusiasm and uh, you just concluded the uh, Congress, Ayurveda Congress, and uh, we are very excited to learn about the discussion which is uh, happening there. And friends, uh, through this uh, Forum, I also want to uh, mention, very delighted to share also that Canada India Foundation is leading a, a, a mission to India in January uh, to participate at Pravasi Bharatiya Divas, uh, which is happening in Indore on January 9th and 10th. And uh, our theme of the, this uh, year's mission is uh, holistic health, one earth, one family, and one future. And we are taking along uh, a Minister of Mental Health and Addiction uh, with us uh, throughout the mission. And the objective is to give him first-hand experience that how yoga and Ayurveda can help uh, tackling the issues, rising issues of mental health and addiction. And uh, we will be visiting Indore. And then after that to Lucknow, uh, we are also making a plan to visit Ayodhya, Varanasi, Delhi and Haridwar. And uh, any, any one of our Ayurvedic and yogi friends who are in these cities, Dr. Harish Verma will be joining uh, in the whole mission along with. So uh, in these cities, we would love to meet and catch up. And uh, recently we got an opportunity to host uh, uh, a very high powered ministerial delegation came from Uttar Pradesh, led by the Speaker of Uttar Pradesh, along with the Minister, uh, the Chief Secretary, uh, as well as almost seven other very high-powered uh, bureaucrats. And uh, we were completely uh, amazed and thrilled to see the growth target Uttar Pradesh is uh, setting up and uh, uh, spiritual tourism and wellness tourism. It is one of the uh, one of the their key focused area also, and that's the reason we will be visiting Lucknow and these uh, some of the prominent cities, and where they are uh, on on a uh, I would say journey of uh, rising their state economy from uh, uh, two hundred and fifty billion to one trillion dollar within next five years. So it it was very uh, exciting to listen to uh, you know the growth plan they have. And I would encourage through this platform, uh, we have signed an MOU with them that uh, in Canada will be promoting Uttar Pradesh. Uh, I would encourage, uh, they have having a global investment uh, summit in February 10th to 12th in uh, Lucknow and encourage everyone to please uh, keep an eye and do join. With that note, I'll pass on to Dr. Harish Verma and looking forward to today's uh, presentation. Dr. Verma, over to you. Uh, thank you, Sriji. Thank you very much. And Namaskar. Good morning, friends. And welcome to 17th session of virtual lecture series on pharmacological and therapeutic effects of traditional Ayurvedic medicines. Friends, we are running this virtual lecture series from Canada with the support of Canada India Foundation, Consulate General of India in Canada, Indian International Ayurveda League in India and various associations and media partners in Europe, UK, Canada and US. Today's topic is pharmacological and therapeutic effect of Brihat Manjistadi Kwath. This is a compound formulation and it's a traditional Ayurvedic medicine which is used by traditional Vedas for various skin disorders including 
eczema, psoriasis, and uh, even those diseases which are incurable in modern medicine. And it's also used by Vaidyas for Vatrak and uh, for hemiplegia, eye diseases. So there are many indications of this uh, Brihat Manjistadi Kwat. And we have two experts today who will enlighten us about the benefits of Mahamajista Adikwat. We have with us Dr. Nishita MS, who is working as an associate professor in JSS Ayurveda Medical College in Mysuru. We have with us Dr. Vinay Chaudhary, who is working as an Ayurvedic medical officer in Government Civil Hospital Sonipat in Haryana. Both experts will enlighten us about the benefit of Brihat Manjista Adikwat and they will share their experience of uses of uh, Brihat Manjista Adikwat. And today we have two special guests. We have with us <coughs> Dr. Venkatesh Shivane from Mumbai, who is a senior diabetologist. He's an allopathic doctor and he's a diabetologist and metabolic physician from allopathic or modern science. He is affiliated to a department of endocrinology in KEM Hospital, Mumbai, and Jaslok Hospital and Research Center in Mumbai. He has 20 years of experience in practice of allopathic medicine, but he has very special interest in Ayurveda. He has more than 40 international peer-reviewed publications on his credit in the field of diabetes and endocrinology. He is a member of Endocrinology Society USA, and he is sub-editor of Journal of Postgraduate Medicine and section editor of Journal of Obesity and Metabolic Research. He has vast clinical research experience in the for the last twenty years, and he also teaches Ayurveda doctors about the modern medicine, and we will learn from him how we can integrate allopathic science with the Ayurvedic science. And friends, today we have another special guest, Dr. Sanjay Motilal Temoliji, who is PhD in Ayurveda and founder of founder and director of Target Institute of Medical Education and Research, which is engaged in product development and regulatory services, especially for Ayurveda, herbal and nutraceutical products. We shall also take his opinion about integration of modern medicine and Ayurveda. So we have with us Dr. Madan Thanga Veloji and Dr. Baswati Ji from India. So without wasting any time further, I would like to invite Madan Thanga Veloji to moderate the session. Over to Dr. Madan Ji. Harishi Namaskar. Greetings to all of you from Pune in Maharashtra. We are here just, just now. We have finished a three day congress on the, it's the sixth international conference on Ayurveda for cancer. And it is being hosted by Sir Deshmukhji here in Vagoli. There is a very, very large integrated cancer center here where they are treating cancer patients with Ayurveda. And hence this rather informal looking uh, location. Mm -hmm. Behind me are some young postgraduate students from the Ayurveda College here in Vagoli. They are all students from Maharashtra and coming from many, many colleges in different disciplines. So I, I thought it would be good for them just to come and see how we take these proceedings forward. Welcome all to this event. And proud to be here uh, with two people from Mumbai, of course, Maharashtra, and delighted to be in case the network drops, we are just connecting from. Please, uh, my apologies in advance, in case the network drops, I hope you will uh, take this forward. We have heard over the last th three days on how modern medicine and Ayurveda are coming together to take care of cancer patients. And we've seen the most impressive results. 
triple negative breast cancer patients. The patients were here with us. Triple negative breast cancer patients, disease-free survival for 10 and a half years or more. We had colleagues from Just Look Hospital here discussing how they are integrating Ayurvedic systems into their practice. And we are delighted that Venkatesh Ji is joining us from Just Look Hospital. Namaskar Ji, thank you so much for being thank here you. with us today. The, thank you. The, and uh, thanks also to Sanjay Ji. Thank you so much for being with us here today. We look forward to learning from you about your experiences in how you are enabling this. Maharashtra is doing a great uh, work. We had the pro vice chancellor of uh, the, uh, this just a few minutes ago. He left us uh, uh, after the, the closing ceremony. And there are big things happening in Maharashtra. And we are so lucky to have two senior doctors, uh, one from your comments. I am sitting here very excited to see how Ayurveda is being used in a challenging condition like cancer, how the dialogue is happening between modern medicine and Ayurveda in such an exciting way. in this activity, but we can hear from you people also about how you see Ayurveda coming into uh, that integration that's happening. I stop here. My apologies, Satish Ji, in case the network drops. I, uh, I hope you will be able to take wow. this forward. The last comment I would like to make here in the context of India and India's wish, which is what uh, Harish ji, uh, Satish Ji and Harish Ji mentioned about the upcoming uh, Pravasi Bharati Divas uh, to celebrate the day when Gandhi Ji returned to India from South Africa. That's the essence of this, of that day that has continued to be celebrated. And one of the things, additional things that is happening this year is that India is the president of the G20 nations. And we want to get input from as many people around the world on how the presidency of the G20 can be taken forward. So what uh, Satish Ji has mentioned about Uttar Pradesh and, and the people who are coming from Uttar Pradesh, the vision in Uttar Pradesh for a $1 trillion economy and how you're going to engage. Within that, we are hoping that uh, UH, UHN, uh, University Health Network Toronto, will also appear in that G20 agenda for the future. And it's senior people like uh, Dr. Vinay Venkatesh Ji and Dr. Sanjay Ji who will guide us in this process. So there we are. The floor is yours, sir. Uh, I request Venkatesh Ji to start. Uh, very, very important hospital in India, just local hospital with uh, so many uh, skills that are all there in one center. Thank you, Ji. We look forward to your comments. And Thank then you. we will follow on with words from Sanjay Ji. Namaskar Ji. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Madan Ji. Thank you for uh, giving me opportunity to speak today here on this forum. The first most important thing I would like to mention that the modern medicine, the allopathic compounds do have certain challenges and limitations, which upfront I would like to accept it. The most common important is uh, in, in particular for the diseases uh, which are cardiovascular or lifelong diseases like diabetes, the challenges are drug resistance and the side effect of the drugs. The modern medicine is still working on that and yet a perfect pill is not being invented. We are talking about uh, uh, the development further and we are talking about the pharmacogenomics altogether but as of now especially in the area of cardiovascular diseases we have not got a perfect pill so uh, my journey with collaboration with ayurveda starts uh, maybe 20 years before when i started the uh, did the first study in type 2 diabetes patients with uh, pancreasin and adm01 and those days in 2000 to 2003 and i have seen the exciting results of decrease in blood sugars and decrease in hpa1c by 0.5 to 0.6 percent in few of my patients which was at par with a standard medicine like metformin or uh, acarbose which are the commonly used medicines what we do it 
the the studies were done placebo control on those days and those were the drug knife patients but i was excited to see that there was a, uh, i have done the homa insulin resistance re reduction in homa insulin resistance in those, day, those days and subsequently the newer molecules like ginseng maybe guduchi and uh, kalonji there are various studies i have done in last at least six or seven of them amongst the 130 clinical trials what i have done for so i have seen that the, the studies which I have done, especially in my domain of type 2 diabetes patients, I have not noticed any untoward signaling or side effect of the drug, albeit there was a benefit to the patients and the quality of life question in which the patient answered at the end of the study were quite, quite, um, uh, quite exciting. I mean, the patients, the, the, the symptomatology improvement, especially in terms of type 2 diabetes was really very exciting. What it is required, I think that when we want to do a study or a research or put forward a molecule into that, that we need to develop, we need to evaluate, and we need to implement, and which is the need of sensitive evidence-based medicine. The studies which I have done, maybe hardly those were 30 patients or 40 patients, which is hardly a drop of, uh, a drop of water amongst the ocean of type 2 diabetes, which is the burden in India. But there, these studies were not multicentric. This was done on maybe one or two centers where I was one of the particip participating center. Recently, with Dr. Sanjay, we have done one of the study exciting, another one of the exciting study in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in type 2 diabetes, where it was a three-month study. And when we treated these patients with Ayurvedic compound, Dr. Sanjay will be able to elaborate that. We have, we have done the fibroscan score of these patients. And we were surprised that there was 20, minimum 20% 20 improvement in fibroscan uh, score, uh, which was there when they recruited in the study at the end of three months. We used this study as an active comparator study. I, I mean, I, in discussion with Dr. Sanjay, we designed that and we took one of the standard care of vitamin E as an active comparator for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And we were quite exciting that 20% reduction in fibro, fibro scan score, even the patient is not able to do with diet and exercise alone. And these findings excites me all the time to have my own interest since last two decades in Ayurvedic compounds. I would like to mention that in KM Hospital Pharmacology Department did a study amongst the postgraduate res residents, MD and MS students of KM Hospital, and they, they found out the survey, did a survey of how many MD and MS students prescribe the Ayurvedic molecules. And we, we found that 73% of the residents at any given point of time, at least once in a day, they prescribe Ayurvedic molecules like Liu 52 or maybe Cystone for uh, calculus or maybe Shatavari for the pregnant women or lactating females. However, these students who are doing MD and MS in modern medicine, they are, including me, we are not aware or not been properly trained about the Prakriti, assessment of the Prakriti of the patient or assessment of Tridosha. We are just empirically treating them. So we thought that, I mean, uh, the question was asked to these MD and MS residents that if given a chance, would you be interested to learn or do a short term course in about training or learning about Prakriti and Tridosha in Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic uh, medicine? Amongst 100, 73% said, if you made it compulsory, it would be difficult. But 50% voluntarily agreed to maybe three months of course, we can do it. Part time course, we can do it to an assessment of Prakriti and learning more about some of the basics of Ayurveda. And these are the students who are, who are the toppers of India, who are taking admissions in MD and M MD in general medicine, MS in general surgery. We were quite happy that they were interested. And in spite of not knowing the ingredient, in spite of not knowing the, the, the basic background or assessment of Prakriti, they are still prescribing these molecules blindly. Here, we discuss with pharmacology department that, yes, we should have an uh, integrated approach with uh, in KM. And we have an Ayurvedic separate OPD. Doctor, uh, one of the doctors, Zuekar, is running that OPD. I'm sure All India Institute of Medical Science, New Delhi, also has an integrated OPD, OPD about modern medicine and Ayurvedic medicine, where the patients who need, who wish to go take a consult, they are allowed to do that. So when we talk about doing an integrated research or integrated research between the modern and allopathic medicine, I have some five or six points which I would like to mention that the, the study has the studies of modern medicine and the studies of Ayurvedic medicine, the protocol should be at par. And I'm sure all of you are quite expert in that, but randomized control trials are on the top priority. 
a proper selection of the patients and randomization is most important and blinding of course double blinding as far as possible the double blinding should be taken care of single blinding in patients where the double blinding is not possible single blinding can be taken care of in those cases the most questionable part is the generation of placebo pill i don't know how it is effect possible in ayurvedic uh, these things but the pill should be similar like a active ingredient the pill should have same smell same taste same uh, uh, same chemistry uh, same looking uh, like structure so that the patient is not able to discriminate between what is placebo and what is the active ingredient and that's one that could be one of the challenge which i'm sure all of you can uh, you know how to uh, uh, tackle that the important parameters are the outcome what are the outcome studies you are mentioning that and the sample size the studies has to be homogeneous population as far as possible rather than taking heterogeneous and small sample size which is one of the need and the studies which i have participated even as of now the sample size has not exceeded more than 150 amongst two or three centers recently last couple of years i am working with sanjay but the sample size overall maybe there are certain uh, budgetary issues there are certain uh, fund related issues or maybe a the willingness from the active modern medicine physicians who are willing to take participate in ayurvedic protocols as together but if the outcomes are far better i think the studies can be published in a better good journals good quality good index journals peer reviewed journals and that's one of the the next part which i would like to mention is uh, the power of the study the power when you are mentioning about the outcomes the power of the study has to be strong if the power of the study including sample size i think the 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 publications are easily met with in such cases and most important is the ctri registration uh, we in india do follow that and ctri registration put the trial in public domain let the people are people be aware that you are already doing the good quality research but you are the study has started the study has recruitment phase the study has in completion phase and whatever the results are should be available in public phase so these are the couple of things which i thought that we should have that but most important what we i think that rather than having a placebo control studies why should not we think about active comparator studies maybe some standard basic principles and in with sanjay sanjay gave me a rather poddar medical college of ayurvedic college of mumbai gave me opportunity i am on the data safety monitoring board of one of the three of the covid trials which were going in covid periods and i was quite uh, meticulously monitoring those and those were funded by ccrs and uh, including icmr and ayush mantralay i was very happy to be part of that the study execution was very nice there were those were active comparator studies a good outcome studies a fairly large sample size and even done in a rural population like a dhulia district which is one of the so called uh, i would say that more of a tribal type of a district of maharashtra but the da data which was generated from such centers was quite fascinating and exciting all this gives me more and more interest to work with uh, my ayurvedic colleagues have proper science which is required by the law law of the land and including the international guidelines and if we work together i think the better quality outcomes can be given thank you sir uh, venkatesh ji thank you so much for elaborating what is happening in, in maharashtra in mumbai of course uh, just lok is a very special place and you have privilege to be connected to with Podar. Now, behind me, these young students are listening to this. This is the future. And yes. these people are going to be one and more. They will want to come and meet with both of you people. And hopefully they will be the future who will take over the challenges that you've just listed out and then carry it forward. Uh, Sanjayji, thank you so much for being here with us today. And uh, it is wonderful to see this interaction that is going on between uh, Shivaneji in Mumbai and, and to see how you are talking to each other and the data that you gave uh, Shivaneji about reduction of fibrosis. In, is, I think it is spectacular. We've been seeing that here for some of the cancer patients too. And I feel excited that this is the start of a very fascinating enterprise and our colleagues in Toronto are giving us a platform. The University Health Network is giving us a platform to take this message out to the world. And I hope people who are listening to this around the world will also be inspired in the way in which we can take this story forward. The floor is yours, uh, Tamoliji. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today. I think we 
look forward to learning from you. And I think Palaviji, who is here also from Mumbai, will be guiding us through this, uh, through the rest of the Sounds program. Palaviji, thank you, yeah. Ji. Thank you, Ji. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Madhu. Thank you. So, uh, Dr. I... Please. Yeah. Yes, please. Yes. So yes. first, uh, first of all, a big thanks to the organization for uh, getting everybody on the platform. Uh, and I, I would like to give you two terms more. Uh, the integrative term is absolutely there. Uh, the integration is something which we are all talking about for quite a long term. And in the past couple of days, I would say we have been coming up or coining probably new terms and that is summation. So uh, it's it's like uh, summation medicine, integrative medicine is something which is we are talking about and then we are talking about a summation medicine. So we have like uh, the, the allopathic medicine and the ayurvedic medicine. The summation of these two could be definitely much, much uh, bigger. Definitely integration is a part of it. Uh, to, to start with, uh, I would quote, I would say a couple of hours back, uh, what our beloved prime minister had uh, conveyed a very strong message to all of us. And uh, I would I would I would rather say a command or maybe an order that he has given all of us is is that okay we have in Ayurveda a lot of prabhav that is being uh, uh, like say everybody appreciates that the prabhav of Ayurveda medicines we know that the prabhav we also know the parinam of Ayurveda medicine so we all know and we all talk about and we very uh, very uh, excitingly talk about the parinam of Ayurveda medicines. But the message that he conveyed today is very strong and that we need to also give praman. So that that praman is what is going to be very, very critical. And that praman, when we talk about it, is all about evidence that we need to create, that we need to support. This. Yeah, so that's that's what the that's that's what the need of the time is that we need to support our uh, our our, uh, our words with uh, with evidence uh, that's what the message is and that uh, we need to take forward this message more strong uh, more strongly and we take we need to take all our efforts to ensure that uh, uh, this particular science which actually does not need validation i would say uh, to a great extent but then in today's world uh, you need evidence for every single thing the new generation our children our our our, our like say future generation which will be there tomorrow uh, fighting uh, fighting in the world they will be uh, they will be needing a lot of evidence and a lot of support a lot of data uh, so that's very critical the other thing that uh, that that today we uh, today we are like say uh, in the world where where uh, data is considered to be gold uh, the physical gold is no more uh, no more important now uh, it's it's the data which is which is the real gold today and therefore uh, we at at our institute uh, target institute we try to fetch and create and uh, work towards creating more and more evidence-based uh, science or evidence-based research at every, every, every single possibility. So we work at around 25 institutes across India. JSS is one of them. Uh, uh, a couple of institutes in uh, like All India Institute of Ayurveda, Ames, Delhi, or maybe KEM, everywhere. So we work with Shivani sir a lot. So he has been our uh, like say pillar, I would say a pillar investigator rather than calling him as a principal investigator. So uh, so he has been uh, he has been right through us with us in creating this evidence uh, and therefore uh, integration would come uh, more and more integration or more and more summation would come once we have this uh, evidence being uh, generated. We already have that. We just need to document it in a way that is required and we need to present it in the way that uh, that the that the science or the modern world requires. As uh, as Shivanisa rightly mentioned, in, in, in journals which are reviewed and peer reviewed and multiple time reviewed, uh, uh, like that's what is very critical. Imagine you uh, imagine one single publication happening in a journal like Nature or maybe Lancet and all. It will create ripples across the world. I'm I'm I'm, I'm very I'm very serious about it. So you publish something which is seriously done into a serious kind of journal. Immediately the impact will be happening across every section of the society. So it's it's that that is the value of data. That's the value of. Uh, of presentation, which uh, which sure. sir was also emphasizing, that's the first point that uh, that I need to make today. The second point was in terms of uh, in terms of medicines and in terms of products, where we actually need to work, or maybe there's a lot of scope to work, is in the area of standardization of our uh, our products, mm -hmm. our services. I would say not only products, our services as well. So uh, so I would give a panchakarma maybe in a particular method, and somebody would be giving a particular method. Mm -hmm. But we need to it we need to be. we need to yeah we need to standardize them 
we need to work towards uh, achieving its standardization does not mean only one method of doing it it means you can do it in your way but that there has to be certain laid principles and ayurveda already has laid down this principle it is we who have uh, tried to modify and try to modify. like say mm-hmm. twist it as per mm-hmm. our convenience but yes we need to we need to come out with uh, with methods which are more and more standardized so that's the second uh, important thing that uh, we need to look at the third thing is uh, is 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 the safety of the ayurvedic medicines so it has been a lot of concern uh, across the uh, why uh, why we uh, we have apprehensions towards uh, using ayurveda medicines is, uh, is 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 there a lot of lot of concern about its safety uh, say it's like something I'll, I'll give you an example now i was talking to my friend in uh, in europe maybe my brother lives in uh, in uk and i just talked to him that why your people or why your your, your like say uh, your friends are apprehensive about using the product which you easily are taking so they say it's, it's, it's uh, they say it's, it's they believe us they have a lot of faith in us but the issue is that they do not know it so they they for them uh, for them a tulsi or a haldi can be something which is absolutely unknown and we think that okay because we know it very well for centuries and things uh, so many years we are confident about it so that message of safety has to be communicated to the society efficacy will come on on, on usage but uh, the safety will come only when that confidence of safety is built in so we all should make our efforts towards establishing the safety of our our products and that can be very well done with documentary evidence that okay these herbs or these uh, products that we are talking about do not create any safety issues so that's the third message the other thing that i would like to emphasize because we are talking on a very interesting drug today uh, a, a, a potential drug for, uh, for for the management of psoriasis and all so in context to that uh, we have uh, this idea of having quath preparations we all know how it is prepared we lo- all know how different it can go depending on the quality of the herbs the method of preparation etc but it's very important that it is to be prepared and it is to be delivered to the patients in a way that they are compliance they are, it's palatable so that they can take it for a longer duration so these treatments are not for two days or a single dose or maybe five days these are long term treatments and therefore it's very important that we create palatable dosage forms so i have been uh, associated or maybe uh, i would say a privilege for me to be associated with uh, some of the product development uh, activities where we are able to develop uh, kashayams or quats in the form of readily soluble granules so you can keep it in your pocket and then wherever you want to prepare it you can prepare it so you need no need of taking uh, making the herbs and then putting it into water and boiling etc so these are this is the this is very important so the compliance has to be developed through de- delivery mechanisms so faster delivery better efficacy easy compliant easy palatable these are something which we have to be very seriously looking into i'll give you one more example of this palatability and the uh, uh, and 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 how that how uh, a simple dosage form could be uh, could be game changer i would say so we all know about uh, in, inserting uh, inserting pichus or using pichus in the in the vagina or in the rectal region so uh, uh, and then it, the, the method of usage was so unhygienic to like put a put a cotton inside and then uh, put oil in the cotton and then insert it manually and then remove it manually we don't know how uh, we all know how imagine uh, how unsterile the whole process is so uh, so why can't we uh, make uh, make uh, like say these uh, fantastic uh, kind of uh, formulations into easily available or easily administratable forms and uh, again uh, we 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 are we were instrumental in creating uh, soft gelatin capsules into uh, into the vagina directly inserting into the vagina so these are some of the innovations i would say so the innovation is uh, is is the way forward research and uh, evidence based research is going to be the way forward and the last most important thing uh, which i uh, ap- which i like say completely going with what shivani sir has mentioned is ayurveda drugs or ayurveda medicines being supported by evidence in the way the protocol uh, the, the protocol can be written in a way that it is scientific but at the same time in line with the ayurveda principles so we need to develop and create protocols which are ayurveda friendly protocols without hampering the scientific like say the value of what we are creating so that these are a couple of uh, like messages or couple of things that over the years whatever i have experienced uh, i would like to share with you and uh, and, and again uh, thanks for thanks to the organization thanks pallavi ji for giving this opportunity thank thanks uh, thanks thank sir for uh, making this uh, happen thank you dr sanjay thank you very much uh, for sharing your valuable uh, inputs 
And uh, I would also like to invite uh, Dr. Sudhakar Rediji, who is from Mysore, Swastavrut Department, to share his views on integration. Dr. Sudhakar Reddy, please. Namaskar, madam. Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Yes. Okay. Good evening to all dignitaries, respected uh, Harisar, Manga, Madan Tangwe Sarji, Pallavi madam, and uh, Enkadesh sir, and Dr. Sanjay. We know that Sanjay sir, we worked with Sanjay sir uh, uh, with in COVID-19 era. There was one uh, nozzle spray, nozzle uh, uh, Ayurvedic drip production was there. We have conducted clinical training in our GSS Ayurveda College. Uh, that way, I connected with uh, Dr. Sanjay sir. And regarding integration, uh, I think our Honorable Prime Minister Modi ji already has given steps to integration of Ayurveda, integrative medicine, 2030. That is called 2030 integration. By 2030 in India, one health, one nation. That was the quote from the government of India. So there, all over India, there must be one health system. That is integrated system. Ayurveda, homeopathy, Siddha, Yunani, Yoga, Nachapati, along with the modern medicine. So the main aim of this one is that according to WHO, we need, India needs a one doctor for 1,000 population. But now we have one doctor for 1,445 population. So to reach this target, we need to integrate all the systems so that the persons will serve in the rural area. When we think of integration, not only just treating patients in the urban area, in rural area also. Rural area people may be knowing only allopathy system that by name English medicine, but they don't know about even Ayurveda, what is Yunani, what is homeopathy, etc. But they also don't know what is the potentials of the Ayurveda. So if they integrate this systems of Ayush, especially Ayurveda, the common people in rural area will be having awareness regarding Ayurveda. So there we can propagate this what strength of Ayurveda to the people. We can reach to the people by strength of Ayurveda. So that way the integration will be helpful to us. And the integration most of the time in chronic disease like our diabetes, mellitus, hypertension, cancer, especially cancer, to improve the quality of life, we need to integrate it. Because in fourth stage of cancer, uh, there is no treatment at all in allopathy system. But where Ayurveda is having some hope, we can improve the quality of life and also we can increase some, some extent the longevity of the person also. So that's why the integration is very, very important in nowadays. And not only in India, to reach abroad, we need to integrate. When integration is there, people start conducting research in Ayurvedic or any other systems. Because in um, allopathy system or in English medicine system, there's a lot of research has done. That is most evidence-based medicine. So the, when evidence-based medicine is there, people will accept it. So if, when integration is there, definitely Ayurveda or any system of traditional system can be made evidence-based. When evidence is there, the people of uh, world will be accepted these medicines so that we can reach to each and everybody. So that way, the integration is very, very important. The in, how the integration, that's common question. Some people did misunderstand. So they, instead of giving allopathic medicine, give Ayurveda. I, my opinion is not like that. Wherever any center is there working in allopathy system, there, the doctors of traditional medicine, if they are there, if they are not able to treat that condition, they can use Ayurveda or any other system where that's only integration, not replacing the allopathic system. So there, whenever any problem is there with the allopathic medicine, then Ayurveda. Even Ayurveda we are treating, some, again, some went, something went wrong. We need to go for allopathic system. There the doctor will be available. So that way, in a Thanks. given center, if Ayurveda, homeopathy, or uh, any system, if it is there, we can have an interaction between them so that Thank you. integration can be. And Thank the integration you, Dr. Is, Sorry, integration is only for the patient care, 
that is important yes yes for patients benefit thank you thank you, thank you dr reddy so thank much, you much thank yeah you, much, you, you mentioned a very important point how uh, this integration should be done say for in diabetes apart from using the modern uh, medicine uh, ayurvedic medicine can be used also as an adjunct therapy you know to enhance or to give maximum benefit to the patients thank you yes, i would uh, like to invite dr nilesh doshi ji sir for giving his views quickly as we have to proceed with the speakers dr nilesh doshi ji dr nilesh can you unmute Okay. So um, I I don't think so. He's around, Doctor Nilesh. I think we can get come back to Doctor Nilesh in the meantime. I would request our uh, expert speakers. Yeah, tell me, please. madam. Tell okay. me, madam. Oh yes, yes, Dr. Nilesh, we would like to hear from you also about in short about integration. What is your opinion? Can uh, you hear me? Yeah, madam. Uh, already, I mean, I have narrated my few of the views in the last meeting, okay. and uh, I suppose we should have a more and more number of trials with the. no such eminent people like dr venkatesh and all and uh, if we will come out with uh, better and better uh, trials and results uh, definitely we will have a very good output about the integration and it is definitely a need of an art you no know? uh, i am seeing it since my post graduation when i was doing my post graduation my teacher was doing a phd and uh, during phd also we have a his phd we had a collaboration with rajkot cancer institute and uh, no with uh, ipgt and ra and we conducted the studies in uh, breast cancer and the ayurvedic medicines as well as my my batchmate uh, was also having the similar kind of the studies uh, so this is what i am talking about say about 30 30 years ago and mm -hmm. as i said in the my last views that such things should happen more and more and across the globe and if it is across the globe and more and more people are involved uh, the things will become faster and integration will become faster and faster thank you thank you so much so with this we move on to our expert speakers today uh, dr nishita ms uh, who is from um, Uh, uh dr nishita are you uh, good morning yes ma'am good okay. morning good morning so we would like to without wasting much time uh, we would like you to take on the floor and yeah. proceed with your presentation yeah good morning and, all yeah uh, yeah and before that dr nishita we would just yeah. like to know how your interest was created in adopting ayurveda as your source of science uh like uh, i'm i've been working in jss ayurveda institute since 12 years and uh, dr sudhakar reddy sir is my guru uh, oh so <laughs> uh, i work in uh, jss ayurveda medical college mysuru and my department is rashastra and beshaj kalpana uh, so it's a uh, like uh, it is one of the best institute in india and uh, like we have a 150 bedded hospital Uh, and wherein we uh, like many specialty clinics are there and uh, dr beena one who runs cancer clinic uh, who is uh, like ready sir wife she runs a cancer clinic in uh, ayurveda hospital and we have neuro clinic and beauty clinic and such specialty clinics uh, over there you, your I voice is a little uh, low i mean speak a yeah, little yeah, yeah. should be little more louder please okay fine and uh, like i'll serve i am serving as rmo in the uh, same institute in the hospital 
Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, please go. The floor is yours, Nishita. Please yeah, carry yeah. on with your presentation. Yeah. Okay, fine. So, good morning, all. Uh, this is my college and hospital. This is Ayurveda Medical College and Hospital. It's situated in Mysuru. Today, I'm going to present on uh, Kvata Kalpana, that is a decoction. The mainly, the, these are uh, contents wherein the general preparation I'm going to highlight with its uh, advantages and disadvantages. And I'm going to highlight regarding uh, Brihat Manjishtadi Kvata, its ingredients and how it is going to act overall uh, in a group of herbs how they are going to act in particular disorders so like vahninau to patitam dravyam shritamahus chikitsikaha the herb the preparation obtained by boiling the crude drugs the preparation which is obtained by boiling the raw drugs it is uh, like which is extracted from a liquid base is known as decoction so it is a potent dosage form and it is meant to use within 24 hours. If it is used, prepared and used within 24 hours, it is considered as effective. The speciality of this is, it is one of the, the this decoction is one of the Panchavida Kashaya Kalpana. It is a very important Panchavida Kashaya Kalpanas, among which the decoction is one of it. Apart from that, like Swarasa, the paste, uh, the uh, like uh, the juice, the fresh juice, all these are considered as a basic preparations which are used in Ayurvedic preparations. So this decoction, it is not only directly administered for medicinal use, it is also used in other preparations also. That is the speciality of this preparation or the decoction. The main purpose is it is like the, to extract the water soluble principles. The water soluble phytoconstituents can be directly, uh, like uh, can be directly soluble, and it is it can be used by the body or the by the cell membranes to make use and easy accessibility and absorption of these active principles, and to provide a base for other Ayurvedic medicines. As I've already told you, from this decoction we can prepare asava arista and avaleha and other like uh, uh, oil preparations also we can prepare and also uh, by using the decoction directly it is uh, like it has a good efficacy we can get a good therapeutic efficacy and uh, we can aim for better absorption so the coming to the basic ingredients of the decoction is the coarse powder the coarse powder or the raw drug it should be in a coarse form the coarse form, it is very, very important. And the different, the water proportion, the coarse drug and the water proportion is a basic ingredient which is used in decoction. So the method of preparation, the, the coarsely powdered, the coarsely powdered is, uh, drug is taken and it is added with a required quantity of uh, water. As I've already mentioned, like four times of water for one part of coarse powder we need to add four times or eight times or 16 times of water so based uh, based on the hardness based on the hardness of the ingredient we need to add different proportion of water and next is the like reduction or re re like the reduction of the liquid reduction of the liquid to the one fourth or one eighth that is also very, very important. And the particulars, the vessel, the type of vessel which we use, it should be inert. And the heat, the heat given should be of like very mild flame. That is very, very important. So the nature, as I've already told you, depending on the nature of the herb, the like if at all, if we are using the soft herbs, uh, like uh, leaves, dry leaves or dry flowers, if we are using that type of herbs, we need to add only four times of water. 
if we are uh, using a hard or medium uh, consistency or hardness we need to add eight times of water if we are using a very hard very hard drug or a coarse powder we need to add 16 times of water once again it also depend on the quantity of the herbs if we are taking a very less quantity we need to add little more water and we need to re reduce it so depending on the quantity dr nishita of sorry yes your screen is showing is very enlarged can you reduce the screen or concise it a little it's if you can do it it's okay otherwise you can continue okay anyway you can continue all right yeah yeah so depending on the nature of the herbs and also depending on the quantity of the raw drug or taken or the costly powder taken it it can be decided the quantity of water it uh, it is told in ayurveda only like by the acharyas the main thing is if we use this type or the proportion if we use the same proportion and we reduce in the same quantity the therapeutic efficacy can be uh, at, like we can get the maximum therapeutic efficacy this is a logic behind using the uh, like the prescribed water and reducing the same thing so regarding the test of perfectness why we have to use a coarse powder is if we are using the fine powder the precipitation of the drug will be there which will be settled and once again it will hinder the palatability and also it uh, like uh, it will intervene the therapeutic efficacy of the drug so in these two way we need to use uh, the, uh, the as we are, if we use a coarse drug the precipitation won't be there and the if if we are using um, like very mild flame the charring of the drug can be avoided so these are all the test of perfectness which we need to some of the adjuvants uh, the added or uh, to increase the therapeutic efficacy and also to increase the palatability to increase the potency and palatability the adjuvants are added the adjuvants like honey can be added and powders powders like cumin seeds and pepper and coriander seeds all these can be if at all if we are adding uh, like powders it should be in 3 grams for 30 ml we need to add 3 grams and depending on the vata pitta kapha if we are adding honey it should be 1 6 1 by 16 1 by 8 and 1 by 4 and if we are adding sugar that is sita it should be of different quantity to different vata pitta and kapha so like the dose the dose of the kvata or the decoction is totally 100 ml it that is maximum so it should be taken in divided doses three times a day in divided doses it should be taken so the area where we should be precautious we should take precaution the area are the particle size as i have already uh, been telling you frequently the particle size it should be the coarse powder the medium or the fine powder is not feasible to prepare decoction so next the quantity and the quality of water so the quantity they have already mentioned the same thing we need to follow to get at most therapeutic efficacy and also to get the palatability and the coming to the quality the water should be the, it shouldn't be like hard water if at all the hard water the phytoconstituents will be intervened so next coming to the size shape and material of the vessel the material the size it shouldn't be too much shallow if it, it should be a little bit deeper the vessel if it is shallow the phytoconstituents may escape while boiling the boiling process will be prolonged in pharmacies and all so in on large scale production so it should be comparatively deeper the vessel and coming to the material uh, the inert material has to be used any inert material it is very very important because the if at all if we are using any copper vessels the the whole medicine or the whole kvata may become toxic so that is the thing and heat distribution uh, like the heat distribution should be even 
that is very very important to leave at most the phytoconstituents into the quarter or the decoction some of the types or the classification of uh, decoctions are it is digestive carminative purifactory like shamana the pacifying one which does nourishing pushti dara and moistenizing uh, moistening and desiccating so that is a different types of kwata with different types of kwata which are like widely used and next is different uses where and all apart from internal use uh, where we can use this decoctions so it is used for like in rashastra especially it is used for the medicinal preparations for impregnating agent as an impregnating agent it is used and also in the purification of metals and minerals it is used as an adjuvant as an anupana as an adjuvant it is used and it can be used as a a whole medicine as a single medicine also it can be used and it is also used to prepare other drugs as i have al already told you it is it is usually prepared uh, to use uh, like to prepare some of the drugs like fermenting drugs and uh, like avalehas and also the oils different types of oils can be uh, prepared with decoction coming to this is regarding the kwata the general kwata preparation Uh, before entering the the main the brahat manjishtadi kwata i just want to give you some this thing the main advantage the main advantage of the kwata is like it should uh, the crude drug the easy availability of the crude drug and better absorption better absorption of the drug because the water soluble constituent it is directly absorbed in the intestine so if it is the better absorption will be there you can expect the efficacy also so these are uh, some of the advantages of the kwata preparation and coming to the disadvantages one of the main disadvantage is palatability so the palatability the high dosage <coughs> the high dosage as we have already discussed it is like the maximum dose is 100 ml so in 30 30 30 ml we need to take in divided doses so that is one hindrance or it it uh, the uh, palatability the high dosage and also uh, the but uh, uh, like the patient uh, acceptability or uh, the demand the consumer demand it can't be fulfilled so that is also one disadvantage of the the decoction preparation so coming to the brahat manjishtadi kwata it is a polyherbal decoction it is man, like many of the classical uh, references are there first references in brahat yoga tarangini next is like beshaja ratnavali bhava prakasha and sharangadara samhita have told regarding this brahat manjishtadi kwata coming to the ingredients so uh, it has got the, uh, like almost 45 ingredients that is manjishta uh, musta kutaja guduchi kushta nagara all these are like uh, all these drugs uh they have nimba haridra alek haritaki uh, vibhitaki amalaki that is trifala and uh, like asana chitraka shatavari prayamana vasa bringaraja mahadaru patha we have trivrut varuna kirata tikta bakuchi karanja ativisha indra varuni sariva and parpada if you see all these 45 drugs all the drugs is having one main property it is tikta and kashaya rasa pradana the drugs are that is they have bitter and astringent taste the drug it is having all these drugs are having bitter and astringent taste and it is mainly <clears throat> kapha pittahara the drugs all the drugs are kapha pittahara so not only this and the drugs which are kapha pitta hara and it is having the it is widely used in like twak dosha it is twak dosha hara it is kapha pitta hara and also it is very soothing all almost all the drugs like except two or three it is having shita virya and if we see a single drugs like the trifala it is used as twachya and chandana it is used as twachya especially this bakuchi it is used in leukoderma 
uh, single drugs are used widely in skin disorders. So as a polyherbal formulation, it is the best answer for skin ailments. So, Dr. Nishita, Dr. Nishita, sorry for the interruption. As yes. we have a lot of delegates from um, the West also, they won't yeah, yeah. understand twerk. So if you can use oh, a little okay, more okay. simpler, skin, like dermatology skin. or skin uh, ailments. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank so, you. Uh, uh, it is widely used in skin ailments. So like may and it is a blood purifier. The whole poly, this is a polyherbal preparation. It is a blood purifier and it is a, the best soothing agent. This decoction, it is a soothing agent. It has maximum antioxidants and it is antibacterial, antifungal. It has antibacterial, antifungal effect and it is anti-inflammatory too. So the whole, the polyherb, the herbal preparation have these main indications. So coming to like uh, Brihat Manjishtadi Kvata, it is uh, like uh, it balances all the three humors, that is Tridosha. Apart from that, it is mainly Kapha Pittahara. And it is like it, it mainly uh, like uh, cleanses or it acts as a carminative and digestive. So in Ayurveda, we always believe that the drug basically should have carbonative and digestive property. So by that, the half of the disease or the disease process or the disease prognosis will be cured. So it is a channel cleanser, wound healing property, and it has got nourishing property to the skin and like has damaged like cell scraping activity. It has got. And it is also beneficial in skin ailments and gouty arthritis and uh, like uh, other arthritic condition. And also it may intervene uh, in lipid metabolism disorders. And also it is a good medicine in eye ailments. In all types of eye, eye ailments, it is indicated. Dr. Nishita, you'll have to hurry up because we have to invite the okay. next speaker also. Okay, two minutes. So... Like the anthroquinones present in the drug that, that is on in Manjishta, it acts as my antimicrobial, hepatoprotective, and it acts as antifungal, immunomodulatory effect. It has a got analgesic and antioxidant property. And like uh, apart from that, it is widely used as a broad, broad spectrum anti in anti-inflammatory conditions like um, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and in like herpes, scleroderma and all, Brihat Manjishtadi Kashaya, it is used. And it is also indicated in wide range of skin disorders like scleroderma, like seborrheic dermatitis and uh, like in fungal infections and lichen planus in leucoderma. It is very effective, Brihat Manjishtadi Kwata. It is also indicated in some neurological disorders like, uh, like uh, sclerosis multiple sclerosis and also in neuropathies. It, uh, the main indication of uh, Brihat Manjishtadi will go like this. It is mainly uh, widely indicated in skin ailments and also uh, acts as anti-inflammatory. So in uh, where and all the inflammation is a, a one of the symptom in disorder, main symptom in any diseases, it can be indicated or administered. Uh, the main, uh, the modulation, uh, many people like uh, they have been discussing the dosage form, uh, the quarter, uh, the decoction to take. It is very uh, pal the palatability is not good, and the high dose we have uh, the disadvantages we already discussed. So coming to the dose modification, what and all can be done? The change in the dose can be granules, as already sir told. The granule sachets can be carried and it can be used, and the fort ganavati. The fortified tablets, that is Ghanavati, it can also be converted into syrup and dip bags. And also nowadays, like Kvata Churnas also are also available in the market, which can be prepared. But the uh, granules and Ghanavati are widely used and uh, like Aryavaidya Pharmacy, uh, like Aryavaidya Shala, Kotakal Pharmacy are widely preparing this Kvata tablets. So uh, uh, the, uh, the main advantage, the main advantage of this is like the consumer demand, the, as uh, the easy, it is uh, palatability will be uh, good and accurate dose, the accurate dose selection can be done 
uh, and also for large scale production the ganavati for large scale production also it is good and uh, it can meet the like uh, the ganavati uh, it is uh, for uh, for globalization also it is like uh, feasible so that is a, a different dosage form of the quarter so coming to the conclusion like uh, has a brahat manjishtadi quarter it is a polyherbal decoction it has got 46 plus ingredients and it is widely indicated in skin disorders and also wear and all like inflammation condition are there it is uh, widely administered it is uh, like the quarter they also knew about water soluble active principle which can render the specific pharmaceutics thus rendering a effective methodology and a medicament to the society the quarter general quarter as a very it is very effective <coughs> many problems are there so we are uh, like the different dosage forms and all uh, we are going into that thank you thank you Nish dr nishita an excellent presentation and uh, you have beautifully explained why coarse powder should be taken and not a very fine powder and uh, the anupan how it can be also used in anupan and i just wanted to ask one question is uh, whether this when we use it in some granule forms or a tablet ganwati form and the decoction does the potency or the benefits decrease if we use uh the absorption may alter uh, to some extent madam apart from okay. that, the efficacy and it doesn't affect the efficacy but it okay. may alter the absorption the ganavati and all so that is it all, right. all right thank you thank you so much thank you so with this uh, we go to our next speaker dr vinay choudhary ji who is an uh, uh, ayurvedic medical officer at government civil hospital sonipat he is from haryana So, Dr. Vinay Choudhury, let us know uh, uh, about um, how your interest was created in Ayurveda, and uh, mm -hmm. we are looking forward to hear from you about the benefits of Mahamanjushta Dikwat. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, ma'am. Are you getting me? Am I audible to everyone? Yeah. Let me introduce. Uh, 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 first of all let me introduce myself to you guys i am dr vinay choudhury and i am practicing ayurveda since last 15 years in a, a rural uh, a village i am in in india which is very near to our capital 45 50 kilometers away and uh, my graduation in ayurveda took place in pune bharat vidyapeeth from where i went to kerala for my post graduation Kotekal is a very known, very well known place to all of you. Uh, I did it uh, uh, for two years. Unfortunately, because of uh, some reasons, I discontinued the course and came back to <coughs> Jamnagar IPGTRA for my uh, post graduation degree. And fortunately, this time I completed it under the guidance of Dr. Ms. Bagel. Uh, uh, and I'm very, very thankful for the team. who has organized this event because classical ayurveda nowadays uh, many people uh, many people over the uh, you know places they do not want to discuss the classical uh, drugs they do not want to discuss the classical ways of healing rather they want to uh, go into the modern approach am i audible madam i'm not yes, getting Dr. you Vena. yes dr vinay yes Yeah, okay, okay yeah so my, my uh, uh, when dr harish uh, dr harish verma ji uh, you know he called me up so definitely it was my pleasure that i am delivering my talk i am sharing my views to the to the guys who are really interested in um, uh, traditional way of feeling and the topic given to me is mahamanjishtadi kashayam and its clinical use so uh, the doctor uh, who recently i mean uh, you know before me uh, let me share my slide first then i'll discuss you okay one second one 
One second, one second. Yeah. Yeah, so. Madam, my slides are visible. Yes, yes. You'll have to put it on the presentation mode. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, this Mahamajishtadi Kashayam, there are several decoction mentioned in the text and they are into the practice, traditional Dr. practice. Dr. Vinay, you'll but, have to yeah. go on the presentation mode, please. One second, madam. Uh, yeah, is it okay? Yeah, that, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, so this is Mahamanjishtadi Kashayam. And the uh, good thing about this, or the important thing about this Kashayam is, this Kashayam was, the decoction was not mentioned in the Bruhatrai. Bruhatrai means Charaka, Vagbat, and Shushruta, they didn't mention it. But a smallest version of this, Mahamanjishtadi means the bigger version of Manjishtadi uh, decoction. The smaller version of this was mentioned by uh, Vagbat as uh, Nishottamadi Kashayam. Uh, under under uh, the treatment protocol for Kushta, the clinical dermatology. So the importance of this Kashayam is, it, it was started in Bruhatrai, but after 13th century, after Sharangdara uh, in 16th and 17th century, the books uh, literally mentioned it as a Mahamanji study, which was, which was a very important for the uh, treatment of dermatological cases. This particular decoction is not only helpful for uh, chronic dermatological problems like dermatitis, lichen planus, psoriasis, vitiligo, and other autoimmune diseases as well. Like in pin figures, you can also use it, but not only in dermatological cases. The beauty of this kashayam is it is also useful for rheumatological condition and as well as for neurological condition. The neurological conditions which are highly, highly autoimmune in origin, which are having a predisposition of inflammation, like, like if you'll see in its Falishruti, if you'll see in its, the Falishruti given in Shastras, Netra Roge and Paksha Gade. Netra Roge means the ophthalmic disorders and Paksha Gade means, uh, you know, hemiparesis. So uh, hemiparesis in any condition. So the both terms give us a clue towards multiple sclerosis in which the, op I mean, the neuritis, optic neuritis is the chief feature along with, along with the hemiparesis or paresis of the uh, neuromuscular system. So this kashayam, this decoction is also helpful in neurological cases, in uh, autoimmune disorders of joints like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, SLE, vasculitis, mixed connective tissue disorder. In our clinical practice, we use it in wherever the inflammation occurs in, in deeper tissues, like in Vadrakta cases. Vadrakta means when rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and mixed connective tissue disorders. And in Kushta, where inflammation is there, there are some dermatological uh, problems in which inflammation is uh, uh, not the uh, you know, most important, important factor. So we do not use it. We only use it wherever the inflammation occurs. And uh, about, the, about its uh, you know, herbal uh, configuration, I would highlight one point, my dear friends. They, it's a multi-herbal formulation in which there are more than five, 45 drugs are there. And there are minor, minor changes when we see different, different Shastras. Like the reference which I have quoted is from Sahastri Yogam, is a text. Another reference from Bhashadji Ratanavali and Sharangdar shows a minor change in the, in, the, in the formulation where they add Chitraka and Karanja into it. So, uh, uh, it, uh, but almost the, the basic framework of the Kashayam remains same. And one of the one of the important thing which we we, we should look forward to uh, this kashayam is they, they, there is one herb known as thiamine. If you will see, I will uh, show you the into the next slide. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the last 
yeah the last herb if you are if you are if it is visible to you thryman zentinia kuro it's a himalayan herb which is which is not available in the market and it is one of the most important herb in it which is most potent anti inflammatory along with uh, uh, this chiraita and uh, shatavar so uh, if if some of the pharmacy is, uh, some of the pharmacy they are uh, taking thymine seriously and they are adding into it the quality of the uh, the herbal formulation would be much much better so as a clinician i would highlight i would like to highlight that the presence of thymine is more of a, a most important and we should uh, look into it then uh, let me next slide yeah uh if we we'll, as a clinician if we we'll, uh, see uh, doshas according to ayurveda it is though it is tridosha hara but mainly it is kapha pitta shamana and dhatu the tissues on which uh, it works it is a rakta prasadan medicine rakta prasadan means it actually purifies and it detoxifies our blood tissue and it is medohara medohara does not mean that it reduces the obesity medohara means which actually reduces the doshas which act actually reduces the toxins present or or the ama present in medo dhatu uh, and uh, uh, you know uh, make it uh, disease free and uh, about agni it is a am pachan kashayam am pachan in ayurveda because most of the diseases according to ayurveda philosophy they are uh, originated from the ama formation ama we get different philosophers different ayurvedic clinicians they they describe it very very differently but according to me ama is something which is unhomogeneous ama is something uh, which is being unhomogeneous which is causing disease the entity is ama so th this this particular decoction is ama pachan ama pachan means it detoxify your body it detoxify your uh, uh, channels the micro channels and make them disease free or help uh, them being disease free uh, uh, on mala mala means uh, it is uh, slightly virechak in nature means it is slightly purgative in nature and it also facilitates it, taught, it also uh, clears your uh, urinary channels uh, urinary system so it is mutrala in nature and uh, on srotasa it is srotashodana and uh, uh you know vatnadi balya vatnadi balya means it the the for the the combination of the drugs is like that it acts on neurological system and it 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 uh, uh, clears the toxins presents in majja dhatu ultimately make them daha free means it reduces the inflammation present in in uh, in your nervous system and therefore the diseases which are caused by inflammation of nerves or demyelination which occurs due to inflammatory changes it helps in like systemic uh, i mean multiple sclerosis it helps a lot and other demyelination process which are uh, which actually occurs from inflammation it also helps in it so clinically it is uh, a useful very useful in dermatological conditions like dermatitis atopic dermatitis Uh, uh lichen lichen uh, i mean lichen planus and lichen simplex chronicus psoriasis and uh, in vitiligo that is shwetra in ayurveda vatrakta vatrakta means all uh, uh disorders which are covered under the umbrella of rheumatology but basically it helps in the disorders which are caused by inflammation or which are caused by the autoimmune processes sorry another uh, uh, you know use of it is in stds in vranas uh, in uh, venereal diseases it is also helpful in filariasis filariasis is a condition where uh, you know lymphadenitis is the major feature in chronic cases of filariasis it reduces the shofa it reduces the uh, swelling of the uh, you know illness and uh, thus facilitates the better quality uh, in the patients and supti uh, is also an indication for this uh, particular kashaya 
Supti means the paresthesia. They, they occur in, in many disorders, but neuropathy is a very common term. So I would not go into the details, but this is sufficient, more than sufficient, this word, uh, which can, you know, uh, take you uh, uh, to uh, the importance of this kashayam is also very useful in neurological conditions. So Paksha Ghatam is also a term which explains the use of um, uh, Mahamanjishtadi in stroke, uh, CVA and several palsies, uh, especially the stroke which occurs due to hemorrhage and in the chronic uh, hemorrhagic stroke patient is highly <laughs> useful. Medha doshas means in thyroid disorders, dyslipidemia, in obesity with various drugs, it, it is used as anupan, like along with medo hargoglu or uh, vyoshadi hargoglu or vyoshadi loham, we can use uh, this kashayam. Netrogas is also an indication, but I, as I have mentioned, the inflammatory disorders associated with the other disorders which are given as Falashruti, like optic neuritis uh, with systemic illness in multiple sclerosis, we can use it. Uh, I would also like to share some work which has already been carried out for this Kashayam. Uh, several work they have been carried out. The next slide would show you. Dr. Harish. Hello. Yeah, madam, could you yes. please? Yeah, the last slide I would I would uh, uh, share you. Uh, we shows uh, the work which have been carried out on this classical formulation. Several scholars they have uh, uh, done a lot of scientific work and they have uh, uh, established as the good compound which is useful in inflammatory disorders, autoimmune disorders, skin disorders, like acne, right from acne to disorders which are originated from autoimmune region like psoriasis and, and in uh, uh, neurology, especially this, this decoction where in a single patient, if neurological complaint of inflammatory nature and uh, 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 dermatological condition occurs together, we can use it. Like I will we give you a simple it. example. Like if a SLE patient comes to you having both the affliction of nerve tissue as well as of skin, you can use this compound. Yes. You can use this uh, uh, decoction. Like if a patient of SLE is having palsy and is also having some skin problems, uh, inflammatory skin problems, you can use this decoction. So this is just an example. You can use this uh, decoction in many ways, many, many ways. With these words, I would like to, uh, uh, I mean, um, end my talk and I would like to open the discussion for questions. If someone wants to ask any question regarding clinical use of clinical application of this decoction, you are uh, free. Please ask. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vinay. A wonderful presentation. I would uh, request Dr. Harish Varmaji if he wishes to have any discussion yeah, with, on this. Dr. Vinayji, you can uh, exit your presentation. One second, sir. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, if someone asks to, uh, I mean, someone wants to ask any question, you're, you're yeah. welcome. Uh, uh, you can uh, yeah, screen share. stop your screen, please, Dr. Vinay. Yeah, ma'am. Stop sharing your screen. Yeah, I've already stopped it. Screen share. One second. You have to stop screen, uh, screen sharing. Yes, uh, stop screen sharing. Yeah. So, Dr. Vinaji, you have mentioned that primarily this drug can be used as a immunosuppressive in autoimmune diseases. Is it correct? Dr. Vinay? Dr. Vinay? Can you hear? Yeah. Yeah. 
So, Dr. Okay. Venerji, please unmute you. Please unmute yourself. Yeah, are you getting me, sir? Yes. So, yeah. uh, Dr. Venerji, you mentioned that this uh, breath watch in the uh, uh, breath manjista the quad is. Uh, mainly recommended for autoimmune diseases. Is it correct? Yeah, in present era, though they have not mentioned it, but in present era, because this is highly useful for inflammatory conditions, chronic inflammatory condition, and in autoimmune disorders, is inflammation is one of the chief feature, you know, so we can use it according to the Palishruti, which are mentioned in Shastras, like they have given Paksha Gadam, they have given Netra Roge, they have given Vadarakta, Vadarakta we, we can, you know, uh, 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 think that these autoimmune rheumatological complaints, they can be parallelly, can be think on the line, Vadarakta. So we can use in autoimmune conditions, definitely. But uh, recently, you may have noticed, there was a observation by the hepatologist about the use of Tinospora cordifolia in autoimmune hepatitis. Right. And, and they mentioned that right. Tinospora cordifolia, which was widely publicized by our IUS department for COVID, uh, in COVID uh, pandemic, and uh, they found it, it uh, caused liver injury in autoimmune hepatitis. Uh, Dr. Harish, uh, I would like to put my emphasis upon this point that this is very true that some single heart formulation they can be cytotoxic. But, uh, you know, if Guruji is hepatotoxic, we cannot say that the polyherbal formulation like Mahamanji Stadi would also be hepatotoxic because it also contains trimon, it also contains chirayata, it also contains several herbs, which, which could be cytoprotective, which could be hepatoprotective as well. So there is a need of scientific research, scientific study to be carried out on that, whether these drugs are uh, you know, having cytotoxicity or not. But definitely this is an eye opener for us and uh, uh, we would uh, definitely, uh, you know, carry some work on uh, uh, cytotoxicity about the herbs, uh, as you mentioned that Guruji in some study shown uh, hepatotoxicity. So we are not, uh, you know, escaping ourselves. We are very, very open. And uh, if it is like that, uh, we would share it with you. If further studies, any study, such kind of study, you know, we find that this is uh, having some toxicity, we would uh, be very happy to share it with you. Okay, thank you, sir. And is it, uh, have you ever used uh, only Manjista in any skin disorder? Only Manjista? Uh, sir, I'm a, no, I'm a traditional, I'm a traditional practitioner. I use totally traditional medicines, uh, which have been mentioned in Shastra. But regarding Manjista, if you have asked, I have seen some ill effects of Manjista as well, because this matter root uh, in our traditional uh, uh, setups where tribes practice uh, matter root, uh, this uh, uh, excessive dose of matter root can cause some psychological problem yeah. because, mm -hmm. because it has got some alkaloids which disturb your uh, mentals. So uh, we, uh, we should be very cautious and uh, re, uh, I mean, uh, while using the single herb, they are more pot they are more potent. And about the, uh, you know, when we use single herbs, because there is no such references, very few references are there. Ayurveda is a science which believes on, uh, you know, polyherbal formulation more rather than using single. There are single uses as well. But uh, uh, regarding Manjista, uh, this was my experience and my knowledge which I have shared that. Uh, in in some psychological uh, issues, we should need we should use it very cautiously. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Over to Parviji. Dr. Vinay, a uh, very good presentation, and I would just like to say that uh, Mahamanjista the Quat can be used in uh, a number of ailments, but it has to be combined with some other Ayurvedic formulations, like for skin disease. Yeah, yeah you are <laughs> or, right. Right. For I uh, mm. say you combine it with Arogyavardhani to get a better enhanced uh, yeah, you are very, uh, uh, effect I'm on that very, particular mm. ailment. So uh, yeah, thank I'm you very, very much. Very, very much impressed. 
with your uh, linings because the origin of these decoctions took place for anupana, for anupana. use as anupana. The main right. medicine would be different, but as anupana, as a vehicle, we would be uh, using ma manjishtadi in different, Absolutely. different diseases. Absolutely. Yes. It's like to complement uh, each other's uh, benefits on that particular ailment. So, uh, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Vinay. Uh, any questions, uh, Dr. Sat Satish ji, or anybody wants to give his expert comments, please share your views quickly so that we have had excellent discussion and opinions from Dr. Venkatesh, Dr. <coughs> Kamboli about how these uh, even I'm coming back to integration, how this has to be systemized and there has to be a uniformity to uh, uh, Ayurvedic and allopathic system for the benefit of the disease. And when we talk about Ayurveda, it's an holistic approach to health and how to the person in all, it should be beneficial. So I think it's a long way but uh, I'm sure we all have wonderful views. And uh, Dr. Harish ji, would you like to come in, Dr. Uh, Mr. Satish? Yeah, Satish yeah. ji, please. Uh, no, so thank you, Palvi ji. Now, just quickly, uh, I see two <coughs> questions in the q &A, uh, chat box, if that has been addressed already or let, not, let, I, I would like let me, to. Let me Maybe. see, just, mm -hmm. yeah. What basis is the combination of multiple herb? How to standardize, yeah. Yes, yes. Standardization. Uh, they have asked. Uh, it's a very important question, like how to standardize. So that that has to be worked Definitely. upon. By because Doctor Nishita yes. is with us, so we can yes, ask her. Sir. Yes, uh, Dr. Nishita, thing, uh, yes, sir. There are two. There are two questions. First yeah. question is why there is a need for so many uh, add to uh, so many herbs to the decoction can we reduce the herbs it is like as i have already discussed it is a poly herb effect okay. it has told and we are following it and we are getting results so as it is a poly herb effect uh, so with all these herbs only we are in total or in uh, like uh, the uh, combination of all these herbs we are getting result so uh, reducing, uh, it has been told by our acharyas. So the reducing part, we have not, the studies have not yet done, sir. Okay. And, yeah, and, and uh, what is the way to standardize it? Uh, and regarding standardization, sir, it is uh, like uh, the whole thing, how uh, these polyherbs, we have already discussed, like it is a 45 plus polyherbs, how it acts, it is still the pharmacokinetic kinetic and dynamic part, it is not yet uh, discovered in that area. We can say it is unknown because 45 plus herbs, how it acts. Uh, on the whole, we can say that Manjishta has anthraquinones and these uh, set of drugs have antibacterial, antiviral, but each drug, how they contribute to the system or that is what I've told you, the pharmacodynamics and kinetic part of 45 plus herbs, it is, uh, it is a challenging task once again, sir. Stiji, I think this is the area where we need to integrate with the modern science. In fact, we have the efficacy, it is yes, proven sir. and we have a track record of usage of uh, these medicine for the last 5,000 years. So now the modern scientists, they need to find out how these medicines are working. What is the mode of action? What is the <laughs> pharmacology? So I think integration can be the key to the success and key to the future. Because with the integration by integrating modern science and Ayurveda, in modern science, the people don't have solutions. Like we have seen in, in COVID, we have seen still there is no effective drug in allopathic side. Even the vaccines are not 100% effective. So similar way in Ayurveda, as uh, both, the, uh, both our expert speakers mentioned that this is a fantastic medicine which is used for autoimmune disorders yes. without any side effects. But on the other side, if you look at the side effects of uh, 
new new age biological drugs steroids other immunosuppressive drugs usually patients <laughs> die due to side effects of the drugs so sure. they, now there is a time we we should think of a collaboration or the integration modern scientists they should look into the uh, pharmacology kal effect of the traditional ayurvedic medicines and ayurvedic medicine ayurvedic people also should learn the modern technologies they should also learn the use of modern technologies modern method of diagnosis so i think a new science can emerge by integrating both the sciences thank you i, I would like to share dr thank harish you, and uh, all the viewers uh, when you say about skin disorders disorder especially fungal infections the itching or the irritation is so intense that you have to give them something for immediate control of that itching feeling you know but uh, in my practice also i do use uh, anti allergic pills to bring control on that first or second day of the ailment especially fungal infections and people who are diabetic with vaginal infections and on the long term i have given maha manjushta the quat along even uh, there is a very good preparation by sandu that is hemoclean which works fantastically and you can put them on this along with neem tablets and uh, other combinations uh, like um, arogya vardhani vati or uh, uh, trifala vati on long term use which can be given for 2 to 3 months and you get long term benefits otherwise these fungal infections especially in a city like mumbai they reoccur because of high humidity in the air and uh, so to prevent that reoccurrence uh, mahamanjushtadi kwat and such ayurvedic formulations play a great role in this thank you so with this i think we should yes uh, satish ji you wish to mention something no no that's great that's great okay okay so uh, dr harish ji should we conclude today's session yes please yes please. okay we are we are, as it is always running short of time so it has been a wonderful year we are coming to end of 2022 next uh, uh, we will be re restarting again in march because uh, uh, christmas and uh, happy new year is coming on a sunday and there are things lined up as uh, satish ji mentioned ki they are having a tour to india and very important uh, events they have to um, uh, accomplish so uh, we will be start rejoining on 5th of march uh, and the topic will be ashwagandha leam and uh, till then uh, with that i would like to thank today all the people who have contributed giving my humble <clears throat> salutation to lord dhanvantri and uh, <clears throat> on behalf of international ayurvedic league i give my special thanks to dr venkatesh shivani uh, who joined and gave his such wonderful inputs dr sanjay tamuli dr <clears throat> sudhakar reddy ji nilesh doshi for all their special uh, comments also our expert speakers today dr nishita and dr vinay choudhary for your excellent um, uh, presentation and your valuable time spent on this dais my special thanks to canada india foundation satish ji you've been a long long uh, uh, untiring support to this event and uh, words are short to express thanks to you to uh, <clears throat> consulate general of india in toronto canada thank you very much and of course uh, canadian college of ayurveda and yoga where dr harish ji is the main person dr harish you are the person behind and in front of the screen and thank you very much for bringing us all together on this webinar and thanks to american association of ayurvedic physicians european ayurveda association Uh, association of ayurvedic academy ayurved union of midwest some of the people are engaged so they cannot in, uh, be with us today 
And thank you very much to all of our viewers. We wish you a very happy new year and a Merry Christmas. And uh, of course, to Tathastu, I always remember, remember Gregory Balaji that he should be here, you know, to uh, listen to our comments. And uh, Pravasi Media and Vi uh, Pravasi Television and Vi Media. Thank you very much all and uh, wish you good health. The W, the World Ayurved Congress, I was there on the first day and it was really, really very encouraging and enthusiastic to see the people's um, enthusiasm in how Ayurveda is growing in leaps and uh, bounds, you know, towards uh, integration and so many innovations. The expo was excellent. I hope we can all make it when they organize it next time. Very new things we could view uh, in relation to uh, like um, punch karma instruments and devices and other things also. I, I got some very nice inhalants, uh, just not the usual ones. So uh, with all this, there's so much to talk about it, but I thank everybody for being with us. Thank you very much, Pranam, and Happy New Year. Namaskar. Namaskar. Namaskar.